Okay, our next speaker is Jerry E. Smith, author of Harp, The Ultimate Weapon of the Conspiracy. I, I met Jerry some years ago in Reno. He was a very good friend of Jim Keith's. Uh, it was Jim Keith who actually suggested some years ago that Adventures Unlimited do these conferences and that uh, I would, would be a great treat for all the authors at Adventures Unlimited to be essentially flown out, you know, to some conferences and put up in snazzy hotels or WEX clubs and Jim was never able to make it to any of these. He, he tragically uh, died at a, at a Burning Man in 1999. But we have had Jerry, and this is the second conference we've had Jerry at. So please, a warm welcome for Jerry Smith, author of Heart, The Ultimate Weapon. There we go. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me in this out-of-home experience. Um, that is the cover of my book. Uh, Beautifully uh, created by uh, by uh, 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 the AUP amazing team. Um, my topic is HARP, the high altitude. Excuse me. This was set up for me by the guy who did my uh, by, by the organizer in my last speech, and he got it wrong. And I just fell into the trap he laid for me. It's the high frequency auroral research program. The uh, that 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 speech was called the technology of global control. Uh, I have a variation on it on the counter over here. These are my tapes. I have a variation on it called uh, the technology of total control, which was delivered to a mind control group. I'm going to try and get a, get a slightly different take on it here. I want to cover military control, political control, physical control, mental control, and spiritual control. Since this is uh, Sedona, the, the weird heart of the New Age movement, I thought I ought to, ought to get, a, get a bit into that. Um, I don't have any cards on that, so when I get near the end, if I haven't mentioned it yet, somebody yells spiritual at me, so because uh, I, I have no memory whatsoever. This, uh, this uh, is, a, is a, a very key quote, I think. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and is gravely to be regarded. Yet, in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific technological elite. I believe that there is such a scientific technological elite and that the, the Project HARP I'm going to be dis uh, discussing with you is, uh, is such a... Uh, a, uh, a, a child of that. One of the things that, uh, that Nick Begich, who wrote the first book on the subject, I wrote the second, there have been about three more books out since, one of the things that Nick and I both noticed was this thing called the revolution in military affairs. Uh, whenever you change the way fundamentally that war is fought, it's called an RMA, and I, and I believe we're in the seventh or eighth one in recorded history, when the, the invention of gunpowder, uh, the, the, rather the, the realization that gunpowder could be used in warfare created an RMA. The, the, uh, the development of bows and arrows was an, uh, created an RMA and so forth. We stand now on a, on a, uh, on the, on a new RMA. In fact, the, uh, right after the fall of the Soviet Union, RMA was the hot topic in, in military intelligentsia circles. The, uh, the, the war colleges and so forth were cranking out a large number of papers on this subject. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the aspects of this that I find most disturbing, you know, we, uh, we went from weapons that could target individuals, swords, bows, guns, to weapons that could target groups of individuals, Greek fire, uh, the artillery, um, to, uh, and, uh, to weapons that could target whole battlefields, chemical and biological weapons, uh, uh, rather chemical weapons. Uh, um, then we went to those that could target whole cultures, whole ethnicities, the biological weapons, uh, the, um, the, the atomic weapons are somewhere in between. Uh, now, we're, now we're at the point where with the electromagnetic weapons, we can target the whole planet. We can target uh, whole continents. We can target uh, whole hemispheres. Um, in um, in the, the, the title you see here, The Revolution in Military Affairs and Conflict Short of War, which was published by the uh, uh, Strategic Studies Institute of one of the military think tanks, they came up with a very interesting realization. The guys who wrote this paper realized that the kinds of technologies we were developing, the kinds of weapons we were they were working on, were contrary to American morals and beliefs. And so, what was their what was their contention? What did they say? Oh, you know, oh my gosh, this is this is immoral. We can't do this. No, they said, how do we change America so that America will be willing to accept uh, us playing with these toys? This is the tail wagging the dog. And this is an aspect of this is that we are being 
we, we're being fed a, a world of disinformation on a continuing basis as the, the, um, the, the military planners are redesigning our thinking to let us, let them go forward with playing with these toys. Uh, and that, I should have, I should have gone on to there. there there's, a, there's what I was just saying. Um, I've, uh, this is only the second time I've ever looked at this because it's PowerPoint, and I don't know PowerPoint. I'm, I'm still back in, in, uh, in slides. Okay, that is the official website, the front page of the official website for HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Uh, I, I include this just so you know that this, this is real. Notice the, uh, the home page here, http colon slash slash www.harp.alaska.edu. This is from the University of Alaska. When the project was first started, the, uh, the, the project, I'm gonna be, I think I'm going to be getting into this. One of the aspects of this thing was that um, one of the great c controversies of this project is when did it start, who started it, why? Uh, there are several different stories about this. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the Navy put up a website, the Air Force put up a website, they have since been taken down, and all that's left is this one. Um, that's a, a slide that kind of gives you an idea of what the electromagnetic spectrum is. We go from the power grid at 60 cycles, actually it goes down, all the way down to zero, but of course there's nothing in the world, nothing in the universe that goes at zero. Um, we're talking vibrations, we're talking frequencies. Uh, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum gives us uh, um, um, electricity and magnetism work together in some as yet not completely understood form. And we have the power grid, cell phones, microwaves, um, uh, visible light, gamma rays, x-rays. Um, this is an aerial view of the HARP site. This is a HARP is a field of antennas, and those are the antennas. And it's kind of hard to see from this, but these are towers, 72 feet tall, with a, a crossed dipole antenna at the top of the tower. This building is a, a power plant. This facility is, um, is in southeastern Alaska, and I, I hope I have a map here. To, do I have a map? That's, that's a close-up of, uh, of the, you can see the crossed dipole antennas. And you can just barely make out that under the antennas there is a grid, uh, uh, you can kind of see it here, there's a grid of um, um, a mesh to reflect the energy from, that comes from the antennas towards the ground and reflect it back up. That's another view. This is the official HARP cam. The, the office has um, a little um, webcam sticking out the window, and it takes a photo of the site every 20 minutes and posts it to the website so you can see what it looks like in, in HARP during daylight hours. Now, this is an artist's rendering of this thing. Again, HARP is a field of antennas that uses a unique patented ability to focus radio frequency energy from a, and I need, a, I need another slide here I don't have, um, a regular antenna, regular antenna like an AM, FM radio broadcasting antenna tower, the radio energy goes out in a cone, dissipating and getting, getting the cone gets wider and wider and the energy gets less and less as it goes away from the tower. Well, what, what HARP does is it, is, is it turns the cone upside down. So instead of it going away, it goes together. And it goes together at the atmosphere in what they, what they call a spot. And this spot is about uh, two and a half miles deep by about 12 miles across by between 50 and 90 miles up. Let me, let me go back to that power station. Up, 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 up. The power station. This facility was originally supposed to be an, an over-the-horizon radar facility, but they never got the OTHB system to work properly, so they abandoned it. They built the, uh, the, the, the um, power station, but they never got around to putting the, the generators in it. Uh, a few years ago, the, uh, the HARP guys found one of the generators sitting on an, uh, in a warehouse in, in uh, Anchorage, and so half of it is up and running as a generator station, the other half is, the, is offices and so forth. This is possibly the beginning of HARP. This is a patent from Dr. by Dr. Bernard Eastland. It was granted in, in uh, August 11th, 1987. Um, it was filed by, uh, this is the first of 12, filed by a company called APTI. Originally it was ARCO Power Technologies Incorporated, but by leaving the ARCO in, it kind of gave, the, it revealed what they were really about, which is some way to, to, uh, to, to make money. So they changed the name to Advanced Power Technologies to kind of hide who the, oh, who the boss is. Um, this this, uh, this, uh, this uh, is a method or and apparatus for altering a region in the Earth's atmosphere, ionosphere, and or magnetosphere. One of the rather curious things is that Bernard Eastland and his team at APTI had been working on this sort of thing for a decade or two, and uh, um, uh, about a decade before this uh, patent was, uh, was granted, he, he filed for another patent, 
um, which I have a link to in my website. This is at the back of my book, my book at the back of the book, um, in which he, ha uh, he patented an ability to create relativistic particles uh, at the top of the atmosphere. And I'll get into that here in a bit. But it's a way for destroying spy satellites or incoming ICBMs. It's a ground-based Star Wars weapon system. This patent is for a field of antennas like the one we just looked at, only it's designed to be 40 miles on a side. A, a huge energy hog so as to make Arco happy selling en uh, uh, natural gas to run the turbines to produce the energy. Uh, that's what it's really all about is, 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 is uh, Eastland and his people were working on ways to screw the government out of as much money as possible and they, they, they thought playing, playing the Star Wars game was the way to do it. Um, this is the, uh, the chart of what happened. At, this is off the website. You notice it hasn't been updated since 98. That's a little behind the, the scenes. Um, HARP, HARP will be, let me, let me go back here a bit. <coughs> oh, wrong direction. There we go. HARP, as you see, is a field of antennas. It is a broadcast, a radio broadcast station. When completed, and now scheduled for about 2007, will be the world's largest radio broadcast station. This, um, each one of these, I hate numbers. Um, <laughs> together, this field of antennas will generate, is designed to put, what is that spot? That spot. Designed to put 3.6 billion watts of radio frequency energy in that spot. To give you an idea how much 3.6 billion watts is, the largest legal AM radio station in the U.S. is 50,000 watts. That is 72,000 50 watt, 50,000 watt radio stations all injecting their energy into, a, into one spot. That will increase the temperature in that spot by about 2,000 degrees which makes that spot move up and out, uh, which is oddly similar to the earlier, uh, I was mentioning the, the earlier patent by Bernard Eastland for generating these relativistic particles. His, uh, that, that earlier patent was for creating a plasma at the top of the atmosphere. The plasma then goes out higher. It start, it's generated about 250 miles up, goes out to about 1,500 miles up. Um, I'm going to be covering this in, in, in the next, in the follow-up book on this. I'm currently writing a book following this up, uh, which is, uh, the working title is Chemtrails, Harp, and Weather Warfare, the Military's Plan to Draft Mother Nature. And um, uh, I'm going to have a section on the, the Columbia Space Shuttle, because the Columbia Space Shuttle apparently, okay, the Columbia Space Shuttle apparently was taken out by something like that. Uh, the official um, statement that there was a burn through and the and which caused a cascade in the in the electronics is bogus. That, that's not what happened. The, the electronics did a sudden a, a sudden catastrophic failure of the electronics, um, similar to the effect of an EM an, an EMP, uh, an electromagnetic pulse, which is which uh, uh, in the early HARP literature they talk about HARP, how HARP could be used to create artificial EMPs, and apparently they did it. I don't know whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally, but they they apparently did it. Okay, this is, um, this is about as much science as I really want to get into. That's the sun. That's a coronal ejection or solar flare. That's the earth surrounded by magnetic lines of, uh, of force. And you see that the magnetic lines of force are blown back by the power of the sun. This is, this is called the solar wind. This, the, the sun is constantly blowing bits of atoms at us called the solar wind, which gets trapped in these magnetic lines of force. Uh, and this is from Bernard Eaton's Eastland's patent, which shows you that, that, that these particles get into and they bounce back and forth in the lines of force and they spiral around the lines of force and they bounce back and forth in the North Pole to the South Pole and they build up a charge and the charge is equal to a thousand power plants running at full capacity and then it discharges and it comes in at the poles and, it, and they, this, this is called the electrojet and the electrojet comes in so hot, so hard, so fast it heats the atmosphere up causing it to glow which is what gives us the northern and southern lights, that's the aurora and that's what the, what the name of this thing, the, the high-frequency active auroral research project is all about is they want to screw with the aurora. Uh, here's that map. There, uh, um, that's where HARP is located. Right this corner here, this is really an amazing thing. Uh, this is the largest national park in the national park system. It's 14 times larger than Yellowstone, and most Americans have never heard of it. It's called Wrangell St. Elias. Of the 16 highest peaks in North America, nine of them are in Wrangell St. Elias. In those photos we were looking at, what happened? Stop that. I must have hit the wrong button. Now I'm lost. <laughs> oh, go away. Okay, well, I'm lost. Anybody un can, can anybody unlose me? <laughs> I think he meant Hope, Arkansas. Very good. Okay, you unlosed me. Uh, now, why did I do that? Where were we trying to go? 
Well, let's let's move forward until the, the memory comes back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to get into in the book, and I simply ran out of space because I, I had a limit of 250 pages. I wanted to get into UN biospheres and the rewilding of America plan and the, the Heritage Rivers Act and Agenda 21. And I'm going to talk about that a bit in this talk, though I didn't get a chance to get to it in the book, and we'll we'll be coming up to that. Um, as you can see, well, an often uh, often asked question is who invo who's involved in HARP. Now this is. This is the old data from what it was in when I wrote the book in 1998. Remember that, that unupdated. They, um, they want you to think HARP is civilian. Be, be, remember I mentioned that the, uh, the original facility here it was a over-the-horizon radar facility. If HARP is used as over-horizon radar, it, violates, it would have violated the ABM treaty because it's steerable. Uh, the, the ABM treaty specifically says you cannot have a steerable over-the-horizon radar. So they did not want to violate the a ABM treaty at that point in time, so they concocted it as being uh, a civilian science station. Um, they, they put up, uh, Navy and Air Force put up websites. Uh, the Air, uh, then the University of Alaska, who took over most of the grunt work, then, uh, then put up their website. Since that time, uh, a lot of things have changed at heart. Down the, down the road over here, um, we have um, about 2,000, the funding got pulled. And for about two years, the scientists just sat around staring at the walls. Gr uh, I've read emails of them grousing about not having enough, un enough fuel to run the generators. Back here, oh, wrong direction again. Exciting. Okay, these little buildings. Those, those are shelters, and in the shelters were, are, were transmitters. Before they found the, the missing generator, they were using diesel generators in these, in these transmitter shelters. And so there's, I think, four transmitters and, and, and diesel gasoline, uh, gen uh, diesel electrical generators in these shelters. And that's what they were running the, the, the field with. And the, um, uh, uh, they ran out of fuel. They got, they got defunded and ran out of fuel. Let me show you something else back here. This, this is uh, a tiny fraction of what, the, what it's supposed to be when completed. This is about 48 towers. I, I believe there's 70 towers, 48 of which are wired up. When they, when they get up to it, oh, this pad is diagnostic instruments. These, these instruments see what this does to the, uh, to the ionosphere. This is called the IRI, or Ionospheric Research Instrument. When they, when they uh, finish it in 2007, this pad will be cut much larger. It'll be about there. And it will be um, uh, uh, 180 towers, where here we have about half of the, of the grid is up. And it'll, it'll about double in size. Now, uh, I was telling you about the, the changes, and, and this, is, this is going to be uh, in, in the book, so I'm giving you a bit of the update here. Um, uh, they, they got defunded. Uh, the, the, the Bush administration came in with this idiotic shoot a bullet with a bullet anti-missile missile defense system that, that can't work, but they went forward with it. A curious thing is that just down the road from Hart, 26 miles away from Hart, is Fort Greeley. Fort Greeley is the only anti-missile missile defense base in the country. And that's uh, uh, Tom Ridge had his own missile uh, site, and they they have at least they've taken possession of at least four missiles there. Now uh, there's a guy named um, uh, Marshall Smith who has a, a website called Brother Jonathan Gazette or B R O J O N dot com, and he listens. He's a former NASA. He's he's got an amazing story. He was uh, a NASA uh, uh, project uh, head, and he got hired. Uh, NASA tasked him to figure out a way to give our missile secrets to the Red Chinese. So he worked up a, a gizmo that, that could be given to the Red Chinese so that it would look like that we were giving them civilian technology when we were actually giving them military technology. And after he did it, he went, why did I do that? And is now a, a, a whistleblower uh, 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 blowing the whistle on what's wrong with NASA and a lot of other things. He's, he's big on peak oil. So the, 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 the heart begins, and, and there's a great deal of debate as to how heart began because we saw the Bernard Eastland patents. Harp says, no, that's not us. We don't, we're not doing that. No, that, there's no connection between us and, and Eastland. Uh, however, though the company that, that Eastland worked for got the contract to build Harp because they had the technology, they had the patents, they had the intellectual property to build Harp. And whoever has possessed the patent since has had the contract because you can't do it without this technology because it's the only one in the world. Now, the APTI got brought, bought by E-Systems. E-Systems got bought by Raytheon. Um, recently, Raytheon sold E-Systems to BAE Systems, and I, I, I need to put the slides of, of this up. Um, BAE Systems is the former British Aerospace. 
um, they, uh, the uh, British Aerospace North America has several divisions, and one of which is the Electronic and Information Warfare Division. And those are the people who, are, who have the, currently have the contract to finish building HARP. I think that should I I be of interest, the Electronic and Information Warfare Systems. Um, the, the current management, it was originally a, uh, a group effort of Navy and Air Force. And Nick Begich and I both wrote a great length about the, the, the Navy and Air Force connection to, to this thing. Since then, DARPA has taken it over. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Projects Research Administ uh, Agency. Um, if you've ever seen the um, uh, James Bond movies, remember Q? You know, uh, imagine, if you will, Q has 10,000 employees and a billion dollar budget. That's DARPA. So, somewhere around here, DARPA takes over. It, the, uh, it, gets, it goes from Air Force and Navy through this period to DARPA. DARPA uh, has eight directorates, one of which is TTO, the Technical, the Tactical Technical Office, whose job it is is to make force multipliers. A force multiplier. This is this is a, 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 a phrase that keeps coming up in harp research. There was a, um, um, and I'm going to get to that here in a bit. Let me let me move on because I, I think I think you're having trouble staying awake. Okay. Now people keep asking me what is harp. This says it. This is in in military uh, uh, bureaucratic ease. You know you got to kind of decipher this thing. But this exactly states what they intend to do with harp. The heart of the program will be the development of a unique ionospheric heating capability to conduct the pioneering re experiments required to adequately assess the potential for exploiting ionospheric enhancement technology for DOD purposes. Now let me break that down. Ionospheric enhancement. You've got to love that. Only the military would think breaking something makes it better. <laughs> Mil uh, 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 again, the, the whole bit about is they're injecting energy into the ionosphere to make it do things. They, they are changing the ionosphere. They're changing the electrojet. They're, they are meddling with big Earth systems. And, that's, and they're enhancing the Earth. They're making the Earth better for us. Now, <laughs> whoop, come back here, you. This thing goes to sleep all the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, we have... The heart of the program will be the development of unique ionospheric heating capability, unique, Bernard Eastland's patent. Ionospheric heating, you inject this energy into the atmosphere, into the ionosphere, it heats it by about 2,000 degrees. Capability, this is, can they, can they make it work? Can they actually get a field of antennas that will do this? Pioneering experiments. This is this working it out, working with this field of antennas, injecting the energy in and seeing what the hell happens. DOD purposes. What are DOD purposes? The DOD is there to win wars. So what this says is the purpose of HARP is to find out if we can weaponize the atmosphere. Exactly. Now my question is, is that a good thing? <laughs> right, exactly. That was the point I was getting to with, with uh, um, who's, in, who's running it right now. Who's running it right now is TTO, Tactical, Tactical Technical Office, whose job it is is to make force multipliers, a force multiplier. Let's say, let's say you have some, um, some troops and you want to move them and you don't want the enemy to see that, that you're moving them. If you could like create a cloud layer, uh, that cloud layer and you guys march under the cloud layer and they don't see you, well that cloud layer becomes a force multiplier because that in, it, it multiplies the, uh, the attack ability of this force to sneak up and, and do its thing. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things I, um, that both Nick and I noticed was uh, an Air Force paper called uh, Owning the weather in 2025, weather as a force multiplier. That's one of the things, is HARP is a force multiplier. Yeah, that's the ones I've been pushing. Okay, now uh, I've just talked a bit about what is at uh, ionospheric enhancement. Um, again, you inject energy in and you change it, which allows you to do a number of things. One of the things that they were planning on doing here is tuning the, uh, the, uh, the aurora. The, uh, again, the aurora is this flow of electrons from outer space to, to the Earth. The, the aurora is caused by this flow of electrons, the electrojet. Uh, as a, they wanted to create a virtual antenna tens of thousands of miles long because with, uh, with radio broadcast, the antenna has to be longer than the wave being propagated. The shorter the frequency, the longer the wave. And they want to talk, uh, the, the longer the wave, the deeper into the sea it penetrates. So if you want to talk to a submarine that's two miles down, you've got to have a wave that's 10,000 miles long. Well, it's really hard to get an antenna 10,000 miles long. 
They tried it. It didn't work. Um, it was called Project Sanguine. Uh, the, the head of it was a guy named uh, Chris Dulu, who was, who was, uh, who was sort of a, a latter-day Tesla, and I'm, I'll, I'll get to him here, I hope. Um, uh, Chris Dulu had this bright idea that if you had an antenna 27,000 miles long, you could broadcast it about 3 hertz, and you could talk to submarines anywhere and everywhere in the world. So um, he, uh, he came up with this bright idea of uh, let's, let's, let's bury an antenna 27,000 miles long in Wisconsin. We'll just lace, we'll lace Wisconsin up like a pair of tennis shoes. So the people in Wisconsin thought, you know, you're high. So he tried to, <laughs> so he tried to take it to... Are, are we working, Ted? Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay. Let's, let's, um, so um, one day I sat down and I made up a list of all the potential applications, civilian and military. And uh, I found about 20 potential civilian and about 40 potential military. And this is just a few of them. Um, uh, I'll let you read them here as I babble. Um, one, of the, one of the things, the first thing that, that, that came up, the first thing that was in the literature, was that if you... Uh, the way the, uh, the, the long-range radio happens because it bounces off the ionosphere. You can, you, if you've ever been driving at night and you picked up a, an FM or an AM radio station from the other side of the continent, it's because it bounced off the ionosphere. An off, uh, short wave, long wave is bounced off the ionosphere. Uh, this is very important to military communications. And if you can change the shape of the ionosphere, you change the way it bounces which means you can, if you know what you're doing, you can um, take out enemy radio communications. Also, if you know what you're doing, you can create artificial bounce spots. And the artificial bounce spots will then allow you to keep your channels open while their channels are closed. Hello. There we go. OK. Um, that's another page of some of the military things. There was just an amazing number of things. Um, 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 a number of writers have, have looked at this and come up with things. One of the reasons it was funded was this earth penetrating tomography. Earth penetrating tomography is a brand new science. It did not exist before 1980. It is a, a, it's, a it's like cat scanning the earth. It's like a, um, um, uh, taking a, a, a dirt radar is one of the things it's been called. It can be used for an awful lot of applications. Uh, if you have an earthquake and you want to find out if a bridge has been damaged by the earthquake, this, uh, this, this technology will allow you to see the inside of the bridge and see if there's any damage. Also, if you're looking for oil or gold or lost civilizations, um, they, used, they used this to find um, um, Sheba, where the Queen of Sheba lived. Uh, they, they used earth penetrating tomography to find where the city of Sheba was. Um, it's got a lot of, lot of, lot of good potential. Uh, on, uh, it also has a lot of military potential. As, um, the, uh, the project was originally funded as... Um, uh, under counter-proliferation studies by the, uh, by the Reagan administration uh, to target, to, 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 to locate, monitor enemy underground bases for the manufacture and launch of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, I believe, if I can get this thing to come back. Okay. We, uh, we talked about Nikola Tesla yesterday. Um, David, uh, I, I came in just as David was finishing up on Tesla, uh, so I'm not quite sure what he said. Is there anybody here who doesn't know who Tesla is at this point? Everybody knows Tesla. You know, the, the one of the time I gave this speech, I put up that picture, and I said, is there anybody here who doesn't know who it is? Nobody put up their hands. So you all know who it is? No hands went up. Later, I discovered not one person in the room had a clue who the hell this was, and, and they were all too embarrassed to mention it. Good. I'm going to assume you know, and I'm going to go on, and if you don't know, you're in a deep, 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 deep. You gotta love that attitude. I mean, this guy, th th this guy was, he, w he was the greatest genius of his generation, possibly of his century, and he knew it. Of yeah. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is Nick's book. Um, I, uh, I got the, con uh, when I, uh, Nick's book is, is, a, is good for information, but not a very good read. And I, I don't say that with any sort of animosity, it's just Nick is not a writer, he's a school teacher, and, he really, and it's a home job, it's a self-published book, and it has everything you could possibly have wrong with a self-published book. Okay, on 23 March 1983, President Ronald Reagan called upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace 
to give us a means of rendering those nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. That's Star Wars. That's the Strategic Defense Initiative. And um, uh, it's pretty clear from what they're looking at with HARP that it is indeed a, a Star Wars weapon system and perhaps more. Um, my next book is going to go a great deal of depth into geophysical weaponry. Uh, and the key to geophysical warfare is the identification of environmental instabilities to which the addition of a small amount of energy would release vastly greater amounts of energy. Uh, a good example of that would be, let us say you have a, a bomb and you put it on a fault line and you set off an earthquake. Your little bomb knocks down five cities. That's geophysical warfare. HARP appears to have the ability to do geophysical warfare and that it is a geophysical device. It works with Earth systems and it's working with Earth systems for Department of Defense purposes. And part, Department of Defense is not interested in selling cans of tuna. Ah, I mentioned Air Force 2025. Um, let, me, uh, let me see, if, let me skip in my notes here because I've got the... Yes, it is. Uh, this, I, I put this slide up because I love this logo. You see the, the wings and the propeller and 2025 in the Earth. Um, I should be following along in my own notes, don't you think? Um, the reason I mentioned, let me go back to Tesla here while I'm trying to figure out what, what the heck I was doing. Tesla, uh, as you know, was involved in an awful lot of stuff. And there's a, there, Nick Begich's book that I showed you the title, the cover of. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. The, 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 the reading title is Advances in Tesla Technology. Nick was convinced that this was Tesla technology. Um, Bernard Eastland in his patent references Tesla. It turns out I, uh, uh, that when Eastland went to file the patents, he gives them to the patent examiner, the patent examiner looks them over and goes, you know, this sounds just like Tesla. And Eastland goes, who? Uh, and, and the patent examiner would not accept them until he'd put Tesla in. So he had to take it back and write a section of Tesla under, under the title, I believe, of earlier arts or prior arts and, and insert that into it. it it's, it is Tesla and it's not Tesla, as, uh, as uh, these, these lights, that's Tesla. In fact, Tesla had his laboratory lit with 16 different types of lighting before Edison invented the light bulb. Edison did not invent the light bulb, he was on the golf course at the time. Uh, he, he, did, uh, he did give somebody, they didn't record his name, but they did give somebody five bucks for inventing the, the, the electric light bulb. Uh, it, it, it's um, uh, recorded in the in the lab in the in, in the te in the Edison lab notebook that on a particular day five bucks was was paid out for the discovery. Where are we at? Hello, there we go. Um, Air Force twenty twenty five. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Uh, um. Where were we? There we go. Um, I'm, I just blew past it. I hate, I hate being disorganized in, in public. Um, the, um, the Air University was, was um, directed by uh, the Secretary of the Air Force to come up with what it, would be necess what it would take for the United States to be the dominant air and space power in the year 2025. And they produced about, uh, about um, 41 papers position papers on this. And one of those position papers is weather as a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025, in which they talk at great length about uh, uh, the sorts of technologies that they could be moving forward with. And this is a, 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 a matrix of, of what you could do if you own the weather. You could, um, uh, you know, if you make it rain over the enemy, he's, he's going to decrease the comfort level. You know, the, the soldiers are all in wet socks and you know, the, the gloomy skies, uh, you, so you, you're, the morale is down. Um, if you can maybe be able to destroy the space assets by creating space weather, with these, these rel clouds of relatively big particles. On the other hand, you could um, um, uh, create fog and cloud generation. If you could make clouds, you could move your guys secretly, as I mentioned earlier. So there's quite a number of things here. And there is an international treaty banning the use of geophysical weapons. And this paper directly addresses what they can do within the framework of that. They also address the fact, well, even though there's a treaty against it, and even though we are the good guys and we wouldn't break the treaty, the bad guys would. So we have to develop the technologies that are against the treaty so we know what the bad guys are doing. So when the bad guys develop the bad guy test stuff, we have, we have the technology to counter the bad guy stuff. <coughs> you know, the devil made me do it.
uh, and speaking of the devil. Um, and, and here is the devil incarnate. I don't know if you can really make this out very well. This is, um, this is, uh, um, uh, this is, this actually is from the, uh, the, the mind control section of this. This is Dr. Jose Delgado. And uh, I know there are several people in the room who are very familiar with the work of Dr. Delgado. Delgado told Congress um, in um, 1974, he, he testified before Congress saying, we need a program of psychosurgery for political, political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. This lacks historical perspective. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. We must electronically control the brain. Someday, armies and generals will be controlled by electronic stimulation of the brain. And that's what Dr. Delgado was working on, ESB, electronic stimulation of the brain. Um, and that's the, the quote I just read you. Um, one of the reasons I bring this up is that what, there are a couple of big areas where HARP has been looked at. One is, is, is weather warfare. Uh, Nick Begich and I both covered it at length in our books. Um, Nick touches on mind control, and I went, I went, I went quite deep into it, giving you the, the history of mind control and where, and where we were up to the, the end of the 20th century. Um, there are a couple of ways that HARP could be used for mind control, in that those radio waves that it sends out to the top of the atmosphere, those radio waves break down the top of the atmosphere and force it to give off a scream of ELF, extremely low frequency, which, which comes back into the Earth and can be used for Earth-penetrating tomography. I kind of spaced out when I was talking about that. This is, this is one of the ways that they plan to use this technology. Another way was the, uh, uh, remember everything vibrates. Everything is, is, in, is, is in, in harmony and in frequency. We're all doing frequencies. The, the, one of the ways that Earth penetrating tomography works is you send a, a signal into the Earth at a particular frequency. Uh, in much the same way that a, an opera singer can break a, a crystal goblet by singing the right frequency to shatter the crystal, if you, you can send a signal into a, an object, and if you get the right signal, the object will vibrate with it, will harmonize with it, and will send back a signal. You can, you, you can tune the Earth like a tuning fork. You can, you can, you can get this, the, the, these uh, uh, various strata, various objects underground to make different noises. And if you know what the noises are, you can then find out what it is, is you're getting to, getting to sing for you. Um, uh, uh, the other aspect is uh, communicating with deeply sur submerged submarines is they want to turn the, an the, the electrojet into a virtual antenna tens of thousands of miles long to generate ELF, extremely low frequency waves that penetrate deep into the sea. Now the thing is that these, this ELF, whether being used for its penetrating tomography or talk talking to submarines, this ELF is at the same frequency that the human brain works at. And when I read that, I went, oh dear. Because there is, there is over, a, uh, over 130 years of, of guys trying to win the hearts and minds of the enemy by literally taking the minds of the enemy. And so I looked at how could Harp do that. And one of the things that, that struck me is in, in researching um, um, hypnosis, uh, researching my, uh, the, the hypnosis aspect of mind control, um, we know that they were working on sleeper agents. Uh, you may have seen the movie Telephone with, uh, with Walter, with Charles Bronson, in which uh, Bronson is activated. Uh, he's a sleeper agent. He has no idea what the, the, that he is. He gets a telephone call and goes off and, I believe, uh, assassinates people or whatever. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So uh, uh, imagine, if you will, you, uh, you plan to take over Country X, and you spend 20 years setting up your sleepers. And the way you do it is you send in dentists who are also hypnotic mind control specialists. And everybody who comes into the dentist's office, he doesn't get twilight sleep, he gets hypnotized. And, and as well as getting his teeth extracted, he gets a command phrase put in and he gets give, given his orders. And um, you bring him back every six months for, or every four months for a free dental checkup and cleaning to reinstall the commands. Well, now, now you've got 100,000, a million people who have received their commands, who have received their, mar their marching orders. So how do you launch them? If you're ready to take over the country, you've got your army in place, total, total fifth column, you're just going to do your commands, but you've got you to launch them all at the same time. Well, there's a lot of talk that Harp may be able to put words into people's heads. If you can put words, if, if I could put a word in it, one word in everybody's head, you know, and, I, and you've all, each one of you have your own command phrases, your own, your own missions, and, I, and I, I know the phrase is, Alice is wearing a blue dress. I say that, and you all get up, and you go out, and you start, you know, putting LSD in water supplies and blowing up uh, uh, train trestles and whatnot. 
So I, I looked at HARP as a way, HARP could be used as a way to, uh, to fire a, a sleeper agents. I, Kathy's shaking her head. Yeah. Um, uh, my book is HARP, The Ultimate Weapon of the Conspiracy. So I, I probably ought to talk a little bit about the conspiracy. Um, in school, we were taught that this phrase means a new order for the ages. Novus new, ordo order, seclorum the secular world. To me, that sounds like new world order. Now, what, I, what the real difference between Nick Begich's book and I and mine is that Nick is an old, an old 60s hippie liberal, and he, 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 was, he had that, that mindset of civilian good, military bad. He establishes conclusively that HARP is a military project and goes, okay, that's it, I'm done. I've done my work here. It's military. It's bad. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and um, and I, I, I think, you know, you know, the military is just a tool. The military is just a machine. You know, uh, it's like a bulldozer. Bulldozer doesn't decide what pile of dirt to push up. The guy driving the bulldozer, and he doesn't, the guy who's cutting his checks tells him which pile of, bull, uh, of, of dirt to push. So you've got to ask, you know, who's driving the military? Who's, 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 uh, who's cutting the checks? Who is... Who, whose agendas is this technology going to further? And I, in the book, I look at half a dozen different tech, uh, agendas. And what I see going on in the world right now is there is a very concerted effort to create a, a single one-world government. And, and this very concerted effort to create a single one-world government uh, is, is, is um, at, in the moment, in, involved in interscene fighting. And the reason we don't have Big Brother is because there are two competing sets of big brothers, or maybe eight competing sets of big brothers, and every time one side manages to get a piece of it nailed down, the other side cries it up, because no, we don't like that version, we want our version. And so we're stumbling and jogging towards a, towards a new world order. And the, the major factions I see are the, uh, the Rockefeller, Rothschild, old, old line uh, banksters who are trying to create a, a world government based on the corporations. That would, you know, it looks like David Rockefeller wants to be chairman of the Board of Earth. On the, on the other hand, you have um, the, uh, the uh, um, communism is not dead. It, it's just not red anymore. Now it's green. The, 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 the communist movement has, uh, has taken over the environmental movement, and they're trying to create a world government based on, on environmental edicts. So on the one hand, you have NAFTA and GATT. On the other hand, you have Agenda 21 and the Kyoto Accords. And uh, I touched a bit of that in the book, and, um, and I'm going to go a, a great deal deeper into, uh, in, into it in the next book. I'm, have I completely confused you now? <laughs> let me let me let me let me open this to, to some questions. Any but you're there in the back. Yeah, you made a comment earlier that you, you went on to the next thing. I'm really curious about when you commented that that's how uh, there's only one heart, right? Yeah, right. Uh, one of the problems. Uh, 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 well, okay, okay. Harp harp is okay. Harp is a, an ionospheric heater. There are about 20 of them in use around the planet. There's one at Arecibo. There's like six in the Soviet Union. However, HARP is the only one that can focus the energy from, from the field. All the others just send out a lot of radio and, and hope, hope it does something. Okay, here's my question. Um, you made a comment about that's how they brought the Columbia shuttle down. Right. Who brought the Columbia yeah. shuttle um, HARP, uh, HARP was up and running for 60 minutes before um, uh, uh, re-entry, okay. continued running for about another 60 minutes after signal loss. I don't know. Uh, the, the, uh, I, I didn't do this research. There is a, a website called Columbia's Sacrifice. That's, it should have a po an apostrophe in it, but it doesn't, so it's Columbia's Sacrifice. I think it's .com. Uh, the guy who did, did that, sac uh, guy who did that uh, John Hicks, he is a structural engineer, and he works for a company where for the last 26 years, all he's done is when things break, he figures out why they broke. So when Columbia broke, he said, well, I've got to figure this one out. And um, he, uh, he did a really amazing, in-depth, very scientific, very, very mainstream, very straight-laced uh, analysis of it. And he concluded that, that uh, the, the official NASA investigation was bogus, that they had faked evidence, they had altered evidence, that they, uh, that they, that they had, 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 had generated a false answer. And that, and that the official answer of this burn-through would have produced a cascade effect. But the evidence, the real evidence is that it was a simultaneous, complete, catastrophic collapse of the electronics, which indicated something like an EMP. And then we, he got from Marshall Smith, who I mentioned at Bro John, that, that HARP was up and running in the mode from this earlier uh, Bernard Eastland patent for generating EL, EMPs at altitude. So his allegation is that by accident or or, uh, but, but one of the, one of the I, you know, being charitable, I'd like to say it was an accident that they, that they simply didn't know. 
However, the odd thing is, is that there is the, 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 the flight data recorder. The flight data recorder was removed the last time Columbia was serviced and not reinstalled. But it was found in the debris field three days after the event. And the flight data recorder does not, the, the data that's on the flight data recorder does not match the, the official NASA analysis of it. And it was found virtually undamaged with the entire wiring harness intact. Yeah, I would like to comment too. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And along those lines, if you know, if you believe, I think, with the Area 51 type stories and all that, they're trying, I mean, it kind of makes sense that they actually don't want the space shuttle program to be successful and stuff, because they already have an alternative program already. And the space shuttle one, they, they want it to sort of keep failing. It's all, because supposedly our space program is way, way behind. We can't even go to the moon anymore. Like yep. we could, you know, 40 years ago, we yeah. go to the moon. Uh, but not now. Yeah. You know, it, it, and our, our space program is, is getting worse, not better. Yeah. And part of it is these disasters and things well, like NASA. But that was also what Bernard Eastland said in, in the, that movie was, he said, yeah, they never talk about the pulsing capacity. Exactly. The electromagnetic pulse, and they, they right. ignore that. Right, that's a, that's a very good point, and this is a technical point that I, I only sort of understand, but when you pulse something, you can jack the energy on, uh, of it up. Uh, I know Kathy understands this. Yeah, Bernard Eastland gives a really... Uh, Bernard Eastland gives a really good example of, under, of how to understand pulsing. You take a, a little pen light. You, you, you know, you're, you're, I don't have one on me. You get a little pen light flashlight. You put a little battery in that, and, and that battery can give you a little bit of light for hundreds of hours. Or you put it in a flash camera, and that little battery can give you a blinding flash of light for an instant. And that's what pulsing is, and that, and that all the official HARP literature never mentions anywhere being able to pulse the field. Now, they're talking about 3.6 billion watts in normal mode. And Bernard Eastland uh, ran up the numbers, and he said in order to be able to affect weather on a, on a continent-wide scale, you have to be able to get at least 100 billion watts. They're making 3.6. You've got to get at least 100. But you can get 100 times by pulsing it. So they could achieve the, 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 the numbers he thinks they would have to achieve by pulsing. And, of course, they, they don't admit to it. Well, Gary, please. Uh, Kathy, <laughs> let's ask some other questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You don't want me to challenge yeah, him in front of other questions. people? Is that it? You don't want him to challenge in front of other people? Go ahead and answer your question. Go ahead. All right. First of all, Gary, you have to have, if you're going to talk about the Columbia being brought down by EMP and the fact that our is capable of doing that, you have to have a pinpoint ch uh, pulse at that particular No, time. no, no. That's, that, that's the beauty of, of the earlier Bernard Patton Eastland, which I have a link to from for my website. You can find it. What, what he proposed was you create this um, uh, plasma at about 200, uh, pr according to the patent, you create this plasma at about 250 miles up. It, it, because of uh, convection, it goes out to about 1,500 miles and then spreads. It's caught between the magnetic lines of force and stays up there spreading in, a, in, a, in an, ever, an ever attenuating but, but growing field so that anything that passes through this will get, will get fried. And so the, 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 the suggestion is, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm, um, I've also read that, that there was a, a solar flare um, about three days earlier that reached the Earth at about the same time that the shuttle did, 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 did its, its re-entry. And so it could have been a solar flare that mimicked an EMP. I'm just saying that, that this is a, a, a technology that is patented, that they're working on, and there seems to be a relationship here. I don't know. And even if I did know, I wouldn't remember it. <laughs> um, can I sort of make a comment about alternative technologies that could help us deal with heart? You know, I asked you guys to remind me spiritual, and not one of you said anything. Now you just reminded me of it. Yes, please. Okay. Well, you know, there are ways to reestablish our consciousness if, if we're bombarded by, you know, this, these, these energies that send signals into, these are external, you know, manipulations. But very, there's old ancient technology that allows us to reestablish our consciousness. You know, we can, we, can, uh, we can create our own vibration that will bring us back to center. You know, through ancient med techniques of meditation. Um, we all have, uh, being raised in this world, we all have uh, picked up emotional blocks from uh, traumatic experiences, and we can clear those. You know, there are many ways to do that, and that helps us stay, stay in center. Um, we can, you know, by being careful about, about what we take into our bodies, it just helps us stay clear and helps us be a counterforce to all of this. And also, in shamanism, there are ancient techniques for helping the weather to reestablish itself. And I know Colorado was suffering from a terrible drought, and there were people, you know, 
who had studied shamanism, who we were all help, trying to reestablish the natural cycle, and we, we did. Uh, the, the, it's raining, it's snowing, things are, are much more balanced now. And so um, I, I, everything you're saying is wonderful and beautiful, and we need to be aware of it. And I think we also need to not lose hope, because there are ways that we can counter these things. Um, good, good point. So um, I, I meant to, um, in the book, I wanted to go into some spiritual aspects of, of it, and I didn't because I ran out of uh, I ran out of, of pages, and I realized that it was just a little too woo woo for me, so I, I kind of backed off on it. But let me let me throw out some ideas here. One of the one of the things is if we have this protective field, what you know this this Star Wars uh, radiation field that that will that will kill incoming things. What's it really intended to kill? Is it ICBMs? Is it enemy spy satellites? Is it, is it Paul Benowitz's spaceships? Um, is, it, is it angelic beings or demons? I mean, there's a, there's a uh, everything vibrates. Everything is, is uh, running on frequencies. You get the right frequency, you can shatter a crystal. You get the right frequency, you can shatter a, a virus. Um, this, this gizmo could um, shield that, uh, oh, there's, there, there's known to be healthful frequencies. You know, you have a, you have a, you have the, 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 the magic healing crystal may indeed be a magic healing crystal. That the, its frequencies may make you feel better. Or you, you can, you know, the, the, the Atlantean uh, crystals uh, may be more than just sending power around, but sending, sending positive life energy around, sending health, healthful zones. Um, uh, Christopher Dunn suggested that the, that the, um, the, great, the great pyramid may be emitting a signal to make you feel good, make you in higher consciousness. Uh, um, HARP is designed to bathe the entire world in radio frequencies. Um, and I'm wondering what radio frequencies, they, they, what, what secret agendas there may be behind this. I mean, they, may, they could be using it to, to make us, to cure us all, or they could be using it to kill us all. Oh, well, I, I wasn't, I was being HARP is the gizmo, but, uh, you know, the, I get asked, how do you protect yourself all the time? And, and I don't know any good Western science that, uh, the, 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 I don't know anything that Bill Nye, the science guy, would agree with. The, uh, we all wear aluminum foil hats. No, alum <laughs> no, it won't do it, no, no. The, the, uh, yeah, um, the, in, terms of, in terms of science, you're, if you're, you're dealing with radio, so you have to shield yourself from the radio. Uh, if, you, if you own a microwave oven, you know that when you try to look in it, you've got to look through this little screen of dots. Well, that, that your whole bo the whole microwave oven is a, a box of that. That's called a Faraday cage. Um, the, that grill work goes all the way around the whole thing, and it, it prevents the microwaves in the box from getting out. Now, if you, if you want to defend yourself by modern science against HARP, you have to put yourself in the box. And, yeah, you have to, you know, you have to build your, a microwave in, uh, that's the size of your house and live in it. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know anybody who wants to do that. Well, actually, I know one person who wants to do that. <laughs> actually, if I could just mention, uh, just on that, there is a company called EMF Shielding or EMF uh, yeah. on their website. If somebody looks on the internet, there's a company that has all sorts of shielding and Faraday, copper, grounded things that yeah. you can put in your house. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, um, 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 one, of the, one of the products that they have is a screen you can put on your windows so that if you happen to be looking out your window at a cell tower, you put the screen on it and the cell tower energies don't, don't get into your house. He keeps putting his hand up. Will you say something? Yeah, you're saying um, vibrations and frequencies. Uh, do you know if this thing can affect anything on a subatomic level? Because in theoretical physics right now, there's a, a theory, well, more philosophy than theory, about string theory. Right. Everything vibrates, on, everything that vibrates at a different frequency, depend, that, that vibration kind of dictates what the molecule will be. I, I, you know, that's 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 theoretical physics, and you know, I'm poli sci. <laughs> Your website? Ah, my website. Uh, I, I wonder if it was in this. Did we have it? Hello. Where does it go away? Uh, uh, we're back to the beginning. JerryEastman.com. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to. I thought I had the. I thought I had the front page. Yeah, there we go. That's the front page of my website as it was a few months ago. And um, it is jerryesmith.com. All right, what and the question? Yeah, real quick question. Um, I come from Guam. It's a military strategic Guam mm -hmm. air base. And I saw people one time doing strange things with the trees. They were taking the trees apart and then left them looking like uh, tuning forks. You know, just a bit like this. And there were hundreds of them. And I wow. thought it was really strange. I mean, they were like pretending to farm the land. But if you watch them closely, they were just doing really strange stuff. You know, like just 
uh, plowing the same or plowing the same area, not really doing anything, just digging, and then um, all kinds of strange things, putting um, aluminum foil, seashells. I've not heard of this one. No clue. Like, uh, he doesn't have an answer for that. All right. Um, thanks. Let's have a good